Hi, this is Mark from MC Media. Uh, welcome to our new vlog series called Origins. Today we're going to be talking to Andrew and Pete of Andrew and Pete. And they're going to cover how they actually got started in business, which is why we chose the name Origins. And they're also going to tell us about what it was like going straight from university into starting their own business and the challenges and the pitfalls of being young entrepreneurs and trying to get people to take them seriously. So, enjoy. So, I, I kind of want to get a little bit of an idea of, um, of your background and your history. So, um, could you just tell us about how you guys actually first met? Yeah, that was a beautiful love story. Um, <laughs> Our eyes met across a crowded room. Yeah, no, we actually met in... <laughs> That's quite worrying, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> say crowded there's maybe four other people in the room <laughs> um okay when we met we met at university on the very first day of uni we both went to lancaster so that was september 2008 eight eight, eight. Yeah. <laughs> a few years out to put up with this all the time <laughs> never remember when we met <laughs> um yeah it was basically just we got placed randomly in the same halls at university and I went into the kitchen and there was Andrew putting away his crunching up cornflakes <laughs> and as I said hello and basically he thought who is this person because apparently there was supposed to be a disabled person coming in and he yeah. was like who is this person walking in yeah because we had met everyone by then we had all met and we had told there was a guy that was in a wheelchair that was moving into the other room so then when Pete walked in, I didn't actually think he was the guy till no. <laughs> till he was introduced mm. as the guy. So yeah, that's when we met. How important has your decision making been for you, Pete, because obviously of the disability that you've got? Um, and has kind of Andrew helped with that or have you just been determined to just get ahead and do it regardless? It just happens to be that Andrew's been along for the journey. Yeah, so I think my mum was more worried than me about moving out. Um, at university, she was only half an hour away if, if, if I needed something. But Andrew's like absolutely awesome at caring for me and not being overly protective and patronising like some people can be. Um, he knows what I can do and what I can't do and he's always there for me. So that's, that's obviously a massive thing for me. I don't think I would have been able to move out unless I had someone like Andrew help me um but we have we have like a, a mantra in life because when i was born I don't know if you know this but the doctors basically said that i'd never be able to walk um i'd never be able to stand up i, I would just you know i wouldn't be living a great life basically and they said that at the age of around three to five um, it, I've got an extremely rare condition, so it took them till I was five to actually d diagnose it. And they said I was the only one in the world with my condition at the time, to that extremity. So, throughout my life I've always had like tests done on me and stuff like that, even to Probed. this day. Constantly. <laughs> so, <laughs> not like that. <laughs> so, basically, I can now walk. And that's just down to like determination, it's down to just going for it and not letting any limitations hold you back. If someone says you can't do something, it doesn't actually mean that you can't do it. So that's the kind of mantra we've had in life with everything, isn't it? So when I went to uni, that was a massive step for me. And when I moved out, that was like a, another massive step for me, going to Newcastle. Because in Newcastle, we didn't know anyone. We had like three or four friends. Well, not even friends, just people that we knew. And they were he, him, like, his friends. Mm. I didn't really know them. Um, I only really knew Andrew and his girlfriend. So we moved over there. We didn't know anybody friends-wise, and we didn't have any business contacts whatsoever. So at Lancaster, we knew all the strings to pull because it's like its own little mini community. Mm. If you want this done, if you want that advertised there, if you want to get away with doing some promotion at that event, you just talk to this person or that person. But in in Newcastle, we didn't have any idea, we didn't know anybody. So we literally just started from nothing, but 
we had that kind of mantra of if you put your mind to it, you know, you can do it. Because you can now walk. I can like now you walk. missed that bit out, yeah. Did I not say that? <laughs> no, I can now walk. Thank you. Yes. No, he, he did cover it's it. It's a miracle. I did, he, cover it. he did cover it. He did cover it. <laughs> yeah, miracles. Um, <clears throat> but that, that, that kind of mindset obviously has, has made you even more determined to be successful in business mm. as well as life. Yeah. Did, Andrew, did you have that kind of mindset as well? Or has, has that developed with the amount of time you've spent with Pete? He's um, kind of proved to you that just go for it. Just, you know, think, no matter what the odds are, just have a bash. Yeah, I think Pete was a big inspiration to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, at university, he was the one that's kind of said, you know what, let's kind of just go for it. Let's do it. And I thought, okay, let's kind of, yeah. Let's do it. So, yeah, I think I have always been a fairly positive person. Yeah. I think that probably comes from my parents always telling me I can do whatever I want to do. I've always been a little bit competitive, I guess, as well. So, I don't like... <laughs> if I'm doing something, I'm doing it right and doing it well. I don't want to kind of come second at it. So... Yeah, I feel like maybe we... Make a good team. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny, though, because at university, they kind of um, indoctrinate you to thinking that you need a job. Like, mm. everything at uni is pruning you so that you get a job. Which actually, it's kind of a waste of time for us. But, looking back in hindsight, but, like, it, when I was applying for jobs to do my kind of gap year. That was for like experience and all this kind of thing. But it, in my back of mind, it was like, yeah, I should get a job and that's what I should do. And then I think it was Andrew that basically slapped me out of the idea. Like, why do you want to get a job? Like, <laughs> you've inspired me to not want to get a job. And now you're just saying you want to get a job. Like, what's going on? And I'm thinking, what is going on? I'm being like indoctrinated here. Um, so uni, uni was, yeah, it was good and bad for that. And do you think that, that that helped with, obviously, the the stigma of being young and in business? Because that is a barrier for a lot of people. It's like, well, what, what knowledge have these guys got because they're only such and such an age? Yeah, I think so. If you, I mean, we've done, we're doing a lot of kind of research on this at the moment, how young people in business are succeeding in this day and age. And I think there's a lot of benefits to being a young person in business. And we never, to be fair, I think at the very beginning, we maybe looked at it as a disadvantage and we would find ourselves apologizing sometimes for being young, which is never something we would recommend anyone do and something we learned to quickly stop doing because there are so many benefits to being young. So people will notice you because you are young. You can get away with a lot more stuff. You can be a little bit more cheeky. Yeah, maybe your inhibitions are a little bit lower. Yeah. Um, you've you got more energy. You've got more enthusiasm, more excitement. People start to want to work with you because you've got more energy and buzz than they do about their own business. Yeah. Um, and not only that, but a massive one is technology. Mm. Like we can pick up technology like that and... A lot of people these days in business are getting left behind because they don't know how to use the phone even. They yeah. don't know how to use apps. They don't know how to use Snapchat. They don't know how to use Facebook. They're worried by Twitter. And for us, we we do we do about 10 people's amount of, of work because we have a tool for everything. And when people come to us for help, we're constantly surprised by like the productivity and the amount of things that they're not doing just because they can't mm. and they have to buy and outsource a lot of technical skills whereas we can just get on and do it and that's mm. helped us tremendously and for other people like if we we're teaching digital marketing because we're young people will trust us more than like a 40 year old or a 50 year old teaching digital marketing because Hey, we're young, we're the whiz kids, we should know it. Yeah. People come to us asking IT problems and we're not IT people. We don't know that kind of stuff. But yeah. we, we can work we, it we out. get away. <laughs> people just expect us to be. Yeah. So we actually play on that. So if we'd say if you're a young business, play on 
the young thing more and use it to your advantage definitely you've got to show it though as well you can't just say hey i'm a young person in business kind of trust me i think what we got right and i think still get right to this day is that we are kind of doing what we are telling other people to do so we are blogging weekly we are creating video content we are being creative when we're going to networking events that kind of thing and i think trust was built originally because people could see the results we were getting for ourselves because yeah. everyone says okay i don't have um a client yet i don't have things a way to prove what i can do where oftentimes you can be your own client you can just do it for yourself okay maybe not yeah. everyone but yeah no, oftentimes that's, that's you can do it for excuse, yourself it? yeah everyone uses that as an excuse you know oh, i'm too busy to do it for myself it's like Really? Like, that's your best form of marketing. Mm. If you're a video producer, create videos for yourself. If you're a photographer, get some great photos. If you're a hairdresser, no. Well, yeah. <laughs> 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 no. But if whatever, you, whatever business you are, you can kind of prove your own worth by doing it for yourself. And that's sometimes the best form of marketing. Yeah. People want... If you look successful, they want to be like you. And then, if you see, if you just basically say, well, you know, if you want to be like me, then buy my services because this is what's helped me to get to this level. So, so mm. when when you work with more established businesses and mm-hmm. when you work with somebody who's maybe a bit more mature in age than mm-hmm. you guys, not necessarily sense, but age, <laughs> um, how do you find that you actually break down that barrier with them um, and get that you know because they can they're conditioned in business if yeah. they're a traditional business that they've got to do things in a certain way how do you start to break down that barrier of conditioning um so sometimes yeah i feel like yeah you highlighted the key thing there like um when you said sense not age and i think that is the key so yeah. if somebody is on our wavelength they're on our wavelength whatever kind of age they are if they're not on our wavelength, then they don't buy from us and we're not chasing them to buy from us because yeah. we know for us who is a good customer for us. We know who we can help. If there's somebody that is completely against embracing new technology, embracing doing anything kind of differently, wants to be this, wants to kind of be the same as everyone else in their industry because they think it makes them look more credible or more professional, that's kind of their own choice. It's not something we're going to be kind of knocking on their doors to say buy from us because yeah. you have to kind of know who's for you. And it's almost good that you can leave that money on the table sometimes and say, no, thank you. That's not great for us. And maybe back in the day, there were some mistakes that we quickly learned from yeah, where we, we would, tried we to take on yes clients that weren't right for us because it's hard to get results for people if they're not willing to do what you kind of want them to do. But I think that's another thing that we have going for us is that we learn from mistakes pretty quickly. Yeah. So like we still make mistakes like all the time, but as long as you want to make them once, then that's good. Yeah. <laughs> that's the important bit, yeah, yeah definitely. We, we, yeah. yeah, I think we would take on clients and, and really struggle. We would show them and they, they want to learn. A lot of businesses I mean, we don't just do digital marketing, but mm-hmm. a lot of people come to us and they've been sold that dream of the kind of online business. Mm-hmm. And they're a, they're a very traditional business and they want to get into it. And no matter how much money they can throw at it, it's a case of if you don't embrace it yourself, you're not going to make it. Like if they're not even willing to like go and tweet or go and use Facebook. Or write a or blog. write a blog then they can't expect to make a lot of money online, particularly. Um, I mean, you can outsource a lot of it, but it's going to cost you a lot of money. And in this day and age, it's more about the person behind companies and the face-to-face. There's a lot of trust lost on the internet, so a face is really needed. And if it's not you putting yourself out there and showing some personality and getting people to buy into you, and thus the online products, then it's going to be really hard really hard for you and the competition is only getting more intense Uh, so the the aim of this series of of sort of interviews is to kind of hopefully 
give people some inspiration to, to take either that step to go into business or to take the business to that as you covered that next level. Mm -hmm. So anybody who was thinking of starting a business, would you say this is a good time to do it considering the economic climate? Um, or does it very much depend on what they want to do? You know, yeah. what, what advice would you give yourselves if you were looking back a, a few years? I got a great response to this. Yeah, so. man, you, I'll let you take it. <laughs> well, when we set up in Newcastle, it was like in the middle of a recession. We had no money. We had no business contacts. We didn't have like any friends. We didn't have a business. We didn't have a single client. Um, and, you know, we'd just come out of uni, so we were kind of experience we'd never had a job really we've not we've not got the necessary skills that we needed as it were and yet we managed to succeed and I don't think it's a case of finding the right time to come out I think it's more of the mindset mm. so no matter what the situation is someone can thrive and someone can not thrive um, and I think it's a lot of mindset. You can spend all your time complaining about it. I know a lot of people that have been complaining about recent political things that have been going on. And it's like, well, just get on with it. Just get on with it and make something happen. That's what we did. Um, and get on with it sooner rather than later. So if people want to find out a bit more about, you know, the dynamic duo, Andrew and Pete, where can they find out more info about you and kind of see what it is that you actually get up to on a daily basis? Awesome. Okay, so our website has all the links. That's andrewandpete.com. If you want to connect with us on social media, we are on the big ones, but kind of the ones that we focus most on are Twitter, which is at Andrew and Pete, and Snapchat, which again is just Andrew and Pete. So if you tweet us or snap us, then we shall definitely get back to you.